Praise the Lord, everyone. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. I would like to welcome everyone to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. Who believes that? Amen. At this time, we're going to bring our pastor up to make a few announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to be in church this morning. I'm so glad to be out of the holidays and hopefully just about everybody back in there in a regular routine. As Brother David said, it is good to have you at New Life Pentecostal Church where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, restored. Amen. As always, you can scan the QR code and you can get announcements. You can find out what's happening. Uh, most important thing that happens around here is prayer. Every Tuesday night at 7.30, we have prayer meeting here at the church. This Tuesday night will be no different. We'll be looking for you here, uh, here in the service. Also, this Tuesday night is the first Tuesday night of the month that didn't fall on the 4th of July. So, we will have youth prayer this Tuesday night. So, please bring your teenagers, your young people. Also, at 6 o'clock on Tuesday every week, we have a discipleship. Uh, Bible study that takes place in the fellowship hall. You can be a part of that. You're encouraged to come if you'd like to come. Also, uh, remember our addiction recovery class. They meet every Thursday night. Uh, Thursday night, I know maybe four, if not five people that are not regular attenders of this church were in the meeting. Amen. That's, that's exciting. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you how it happened. They go out and they knock on doors. They, in the, they go to some of the worst streets and roughest neighborhoods. And they say, hey, if you're tired of being in this mess, you should come to class. And is it 3,600? Brother Crowder told them a few weeks ago there was a young lady there. And she was literally in, in the class. And she was high. And she said, I, I'm, I'm right now. Right now, I'm, I'm on a fix. He said, if you will give me 3,600 seconds, I will be able to, at the end of that, have given you one hour that you were clean. One hour clean. And that one hour that those people are clean, they're hearing the word of God. Amen. They're getting something planted. And you say, well, that's just a little bit. That's just a little bit. I remind myself of what Isaiah 55 says. Amen. That the word that goes forth out of my mouth does not return thither or doesn't return void or empty. But it will accomplish the thing that the Lord sent it to do. We just keep planting the seed, amen, and working the ground. Also, remember to turn in your pledges. I wrote down the number in my office on a note card before I uh, left to come in here. But I didn't bring the note card. But we have almost $42,000 pledged. We have collected almost $39,000 since we kicked this off. Amen. Just a little over two months ago. Just a little over two months ago. So literally, think about that. In two and a half months, we've raised $40,000. That's, that's a lot of money. Brother Barry, remember the old days? I remember when we raised $15,000 and paid for a sign, and it was a big deal. Think of what God is doing in our midst today. Amen. I just want to give God all the glory for that and praise for that. Amen. He is awesome. If you've not turned in your pledge, remember to do so. We are at 94% paid. That's awesome. Amen. That is awesome. Also, this Friday and Saturday, our boys' Bible study group is going to the USS Alabama. Uh, it's on us now. That trip is literally this weekend. So after church today, we have a meeting right here at the front. There are some release forms that have to be signed. Um, where the, just, they just have to be signed. We're going to go over a quick detail of what, what the plan is, how we're riding, how we're going. You don't want to miss that. Also, July the 19th, our boys' Bible study group. And our girls Bible study group will meet. And then July the 22nd, that's not this Saturday, but next Saturday, there will be work day here at the church for you brothers that are, would like to be a part of that. 
Amen. Amen. Wear your workday shirt. We have workday shirts that the brothers wear. And if you don't have one and like to get one, let me know. We can make sure we can. There's a cost associated with it just to cover that. But if you want one, you can have one. Also, outreach is Sunday the 23rd. If you'd like to go be a part of outreach, Brother Jonathan Cheetah, Brother Shane McCammon, they're going out. And then Marriage Built to Last, that same Sunday, the 23rd, 6 p.m., we're going out to eat as a group. If you'd like to be a part of the group, you're more than welcome and invited. And then Youth Congress, our youth are going to Youth Congress July 26, 27, 28. Amen, I'm excited. Back to school service July the 30th. That's where we give school supplies out to the children. I'm excited about that. And today I'm going to present to you, hopefully, and try to inspire you with now. Amen. I, as we get ready to open the service with prayer, I'd like to ask you to stand to our feet. I do want to give a plug to our children and youth ministry. On Wednesday nights, our youth class has been running 17. Our children's church is running 30. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. At this time, Sister Brewer, lead us in prayer. Good morning, church. going to get and you're going to get on that floaty and you're going to float and they're going to say be careful make sure the waves don't carry you out too far well you get leaned back on that floaty if you've ever been on a round inner tube you get laid back and you get comfortable in the sun and the waves are rocking you and the next thing you know you're being lulled to sleep and the next thing you know guess what You've gotten too far away from the shore. You've gotten too far away from that one person that can just reach out and grab you just like that. So it's going to take a lot of effort to get back to where you was. Because it would take a lot of effort for the person that can swim to get to you. What I'm trying to say is we have to be careful every day that we don't get lulled to sleep by things of this world. <laughs> And it's easy to do because the devil, he's kind of, uh, he thinks he's slick. And if you let him, we can be lulled to sleep. But anyway, this morning, let's remember everybody that's not here. There are several that's not here, some that are sick. But let's pray that we just have just a wonderful, beautiful outpouring of the Holy Ghost this morning. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and your grace, Lord, that you give us every day. Father, I thank you for this place to worship. God, you see those that aren't here, those that might be sick. And God, you're more than able to raise them up. And God, we'd ask those that are on vacation, you keep their hand, your hand on them, keep them safe. And Lord, as always, help us to keep watch that we don't drift too far from you, Lord. To always stay close to you where there's safety. I give you praise and glory, Lord. We invite your spirit into this place in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We magnify you. Worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Worship with us. Hallelujah.
magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep worshiping God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to come to take up the Sunday morning offering.
Hallelujah. Hold on. As I watch some of your worshiping, and then I watch some of your, you've carried your worship a little further. I watched just, just now, I seen Brother Kyle, he had his hands raised and he was praying. And the Holy Ghost hit him and he just began to move and shake and, and stop. And the, when the Holy Ghost hit him, I wonder what would happen is if we worship the Lord. And we just take our worship beyond where we're comfortable. Beyond what you're used to. If you're used to standing and singing, worshiping God like this, what if you lift those hands and surrender like this? And what if, if you're used to doing that, and when the Holy Ghost comes, you sort of retreat back into where you feel comfortable. Instead, this time, you just let go and let God. I wonder what the worship service would be like. I wonder how free the preaching could be. right now. Worship right now. Your worship don't stop. Come on, let these words encourage you to press deeper in the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Till every addiction is broken. Hallelujah. There's freedom for somebody here today. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Hallelujah. Somebody help us praise. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like the fire. This is my favorite verse. This is it right here. Listen. bondage, your mental oppression.
Jesus, speak into my life. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, heal my mind. Jesus, deliver my heart. Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus is Come on, somebody shout that thing. Jesus, you can do it. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus for my family, I speak the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the Oh, sea. yes, God, yes, God. Jesus you're my everything. You're my all in all. You're my healing. You're my deliverance. Just lift our hands to the Lord. Come on, let's just worship and praise and entertain His presence. something to bring the church today and I'd like to ask as I preach this morning I promise you this I'll make one solid promise to you I don't have near as many notes today as I did last Sunday how about that I've got two and a half pages and in type that's not very much at all that's really like nothing so I'm going to ask the singers and everybody you can return to your place, remain standing for just a minute. I want to try to keep your attention, if I can today. Um, really, I tell you what, you can be seated because I'm, we're going to show something here in just a second. I've said this to the church, um, and we've talked about it now, and you've kind of heard me emphasizing that and talking about it since the revival with Brother McManus. And about a week and a half ago, I, I told uh, I told them I said I, I want us to do like a if we can do, put like a, a little video slide together. And we've never done this before. This is our first time creating something like this, so it's it's new to us. Um, but I've been hearing people say things, good things, you know. 
And sometimes people say good things and we like enjoy them when they say them and sometimes we just kind of like file it away. You know, oh, that was good. Praise the Lord. That's, yeah, God's good. Put it away. And we kind of, we can blow past it or forget about it. And sometimes God's letting these good things be spoken and said. And what they are are little nudges that this is, this is what I'm doing. You know, little signs, little confirmations. And, and some of these, and it, and it sort of began to be organic because I didn't ask every one of these uh, to be done. Um, some did it on their own. But I want to share this with you, then I'm going to get into the preaching. So if you guys will play this, listen, because you're going to recognize some of these voices. God is bringing a lot of seasoned ministers into this church for a preparing for the harvest that is now. The world's only going to get worse. The time to reach your family and friends is now. Now is the time for revival. Our first addiction recovery class had eight people in attendance. Last week, we had 16. We're making an impact around this community. Now is the time for revival. Our youth group has grown so much through this revival. Now is the time to go out into our city and neighborhoods inviting neighbors, friends, and family to church. Our youth group's time is now. Looking back over the past few years, I can clearly see how God has intentionally moved people and families into place to facilitate the revival that's happening now. It almost feels like everything, every victory and defeat, every joy and sorrow, every gain and loss has been building up to this moment, now. You're never too young to feel God in God's house. Start now. As we enter into the new building program, I believe now is the time to prepare for our future. The revival that we are in has been an amazing work of God, and I believe will continue. Now is the time to prepare the building for services to be held, because this sanctuary will not hold us long after the new building is complete. I want to ask you to stand for the reading of the word. It's going to be, take a quick text, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now... Is our salvation nearer than we believe? Come on, somebody, would you clap your hands to the Lord? Give the Lord a little praise this morning. You guys can be seated. What I wanted to do today was paint a picture of you and cast a vision, if I could, just for a little bit, that now is this church's time. Now is this church's time. During a revival service that we had a month and a half ago, two months ago, Brother McManus, he gave a word to the church. Now, the word was now. And some of you may not have came to the services. Some of you may have missed what he said altogether. Uh, and, and some of you just, you, you may not have heard it for whatever reason. Others may have heard what he said and thought, well, you know what, that's sort of vague. It's sort of cliche. And, and you know, I could almost have, you know, yeah, that is kind of vague. Yeah, it is kind of, you know, uh, I mean, that's kind of like being fluent in the pathetic instead of the prophetic. It is, it's kind of vague, you know, like it's probably going to stick. Except that some people he called out in the service and he read their mail. Amen? And he didn't know. But I knew. At one point, I even laughed at some of the things that he said 
because there's no way he could but God have said what he said. Especially when he brought Brother David and got Brother David. <laughs> but that's how you know God does not do things on accident or by mistake. And when he said now, some of us in the church knew that it was not an ambiguous statement. It was not a vague utterance, but it was a nudge in the direction that we needed to go. Now is the time that we focus our understanding of what God wants to do. It's not for tomorrow or for yesterday, but it's now. Amen. That God is not wanting to build a church, but he's building a church right now. That not he is sending revival, that we're going to have revival, but we are having revival. I mean, come on, we can make that mean anything we want it to mean. Now, now, now God's going to give me a raise. Now God is, you know, going to make my truck, you know, all of a sudden be a V10 instead of a V8. Now, you know, whatever I want. But no, when God spoke the word, it fell on ears that were ready to hear it. And it fell upon hearts that were ready to receive it. It's not just some vanilla word that's bland and just, oh man, that's nice. He spoke a nice word to us. But it was a word that meant something. It was a rhema word from God. A word that was fitly spoken at the right time. Amen? And if your ears were not open to hear it then, I hope now you're able to hear it now. And what it is, is God's message for this church is now, and I'm like, and I, when I was preparing this sermon, I'm like, I've got to convince them and help paint the picture of what God is wanting to do. Not just now. Like, I can get you to say, amen, praise the Lord now. Well, what does that mean? Look, listen to what they said. The voices said, Brother Jonathan said, they're seasoned ministers that's becoming part of the church. Why? To help put structure in place. To minister to people because one or two can't do it. Amen. The time is now. God is ready to do it. There were young voices that rose up and said God is doing it in the young people right now. God can turn you into a minister right now. God has helped put in place ministries that are reaching broken people. And we're seeing results. Brother Crowder spoke about it in his quote that he gave. I didn't even ask him to do one. He did it. Somebody asked him. That's fine. They Eight people we started out in. And I cannot tell you the months that went by that I know they fought discouragement. Are we ever going to see anybody new walk in? I came up here Tuesday night and I stood at the door. Four and five people that don't go to this church. People that you don't know their names. That they're coming out of the woodworks. They're coming out of crack houses. And they're coming out of the gutter. And they're coming to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. Why? Because the Lord has stirred the hearts and a new generation has rose up and hears his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. There is a generation now, a generation today that heard the call of God that have said, I will follow you, God. I will obey you and I know it's you that have spoken to me. God's sending labors. Why? Why is he doing it? There can only be one reason. That God sends labors because the harvest is at hand. It is time now. It's time to be ready because there is a favorable season upon us now. So I like when we talk about seasons because seasons come and go, right? Seasons come and they go. And, you know, like, we think, oh, we should be in a shouting season. We should be in a praying season. We should be in a soul winning season. We should be in a season of, of weeping and mourning. I'm telling you, I understand the Bible says that he'll turn your mourning into gladness. So there's got to be seasons of mourning. But I remind myself of what the word of the Lord says, that he has made me glad. He's made me glad. Now is the time to stop wallowing in self-pity. Stop wallowing in depression. Stop wallowing in bitterness. And let the Lord begin to heal you now. 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 And so you say, well, what season are we in? Everything. Every season. Every season. Every season. You see, I've got a garden in my backyard. And there are certain things, Sister Brewer, that grow in the summertime. There are certain things that grow good in the fall. 
Amen? Some of you hunters know that we plant green fields, amen, in the wintertime. Well, you can't eat grass. We plant turnip fields too. You can eat turnips. But certain things grow even in the wintertime. Even in the wintertime. And my Bible tells me what? That the sowers and the reapers, they'll catch each other. They'll be catching each other. Why? We'll be reaping here and sowing here. We'll be sowing there and reaping here. So what season are we in? Are we in a planting season? Absolutely. We're going out into the neighborhoods and we're knocking on doors. We're planting the seed. We're planting the seed in prayer. We're planting the seed in evangelism. But you also understand we are reaping. We're seeing people come in. We're seeing people that are coming into the house of the Lord. Well, are we in a reaping season? Yes. We're in a planting season. We're even in a season where we're tilling up some hard ground. Because there's some among us that you're struggling. And we're not going to throw you away. We're not trying to cast you off. No, we're going to keep working the ground. We're going to keep working the clay. We're going to keep working it right now. Now, why? Because today is the day of salvation. It may be your day today. It may be your neighbor's day tomorrow. But we're not going to give up and say God can't do it now. I believe we're in a time like was in Egypt where the Pharaoh received the dream, couldn't understand the dream. And Joseph gave the interpretation, said, you're about to have some years of plenty. Oh, that's great. Years of plenty. But you've got to store it up. You've got to put measures in place to take care of it. There's things in place to, to count, account for it, to keep it, make it last. Church, we're going to go through times that are lean. We're going to go through persecution. But God has brought us to a place now where he's blessing the church. He's ordering our steps for a harvest. He's ordering our steps for growth. We've got to put things in place right now. Or some of you have not picked up on it yet. And you may not can see it. But I ask you to just close your eyes in faith. If you have to and just receive it. Because Satan doesn't want you to have it. Satan doesn't want you to walk in the blessings of God. But I've come to tell you that now is the acceptable time. The acceptable day of the Lord. Look, look, look what Jesus preached when he stood up in the synagogue. He, the book was opened up. He began to read from Isaiah. He preached to set at liberty the captive, to open the eyes of the blind, raise it, do all that stuff, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The time is now. But see, hell doesn't want us to be successful. God doesn't care what he wants. He said we're going to do it anyway. Hell didn't want Peter to be successful. Jesus told him, he said, Satan has desired to sift you with wheat. He said, I've prayed for you. And yet, all the while Satan was trying to destroy Peter, what happened? Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to give you the keys. You may be sitting here right now, and Satan's all in your life, causing a mess. Calls and turmoil, turning it upside down, confusing you. And you may think, there's no way I can get out of this. There's no way I can grow. There's no way I can be a part. There's no way God can even help me right now. But I'm telling you, all the while somebody's praying, you may not know it. But while I was dying, somebody prayed. While I was weeping, somebody prayed. You may think you're alone. You're never alone. You may think you're walking in a dark valley. But yea, though I walk through it, he's with you now. Come on, somebody hear me. The Bible says he's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. Ever-present. What does that mean? Now. It didn't mean God was good then or he'll be good tomorrow. He's good right now. He's ever-present. He said, I'll be with you always. Even until the end of the earth. Always. Not was, not will be, but now. Help me if I can just preach just a minute. I feel my help come. Here it is. The Bible says, same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Look in Revelation. Jesus said, I'm he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. Right? Y'all see that, right? Moses asked the Lord, who do I say sent me? 
What did he say? He said, you tell the Pharaoh, I am has sent you. Tell them, Jehovah has sent you. That is to be. I am. Jehovah is the verb. To be. It is to be. That is a verb. It is a present. It's a place. So what he would say, you tell them whatever you need. I am healer. I am deliverer. I am, I am savior. I am miracle worker. I am standard. I am. It is to be. But you see, to be happens in the past, present, future tense. So he said, I am what I am. I am what I was. I am which I will be. I am that I am. I am that I was. I am that I will be. I am who I was. I am who I am. I am who I will be. Past, present, future. You see, we can live for God looking back at the past. We can live for God looking forward to the future, but we struggle to live for Him right now. How about this? He said, I am where I was. Remember what the Bible says. That was the God that walked with them through the wilderness. Then they all drank from that spiritual rock that was Christ. He said, I am where I was, but also in the present, I am where I am, and I am where I will be. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. I am where I will be. He is everything you need right now. Right now. Right now. He does, uh, Satan does not want us to build a godly church with apostolic identity and a godly culture. He doesn't want that. He does not want, young lady, for you to grow up serving God with all of your heart. He would rather you be shackled by the generational curses of your mother and your grandmother. He would rather that be the case. He would rather your mind be locked in the same prison as your father was. He would rather you walk in the same sins of your father. Oh, but thank God he breaks bondages. Thank God he breaks shackles and fetters right now. Right now. Who the son hath set free is free indeed right now. Now. Satan would rather keep you satisfied with what God did. Instead of what he wants to do. But you see I'm thankful. I, uh, some of you that are new to this. You don't have a heritage. In this. And I'm not knocking you. I'm thankful for my heritage. But the Bible says. Now are you the heritage. Of the Lord. You are now heritage. You are now the heritage. So it has to start somewhere. Why don't it just start for your family now? Why don't it just start? Like, does it not say we're the heritage of the Lord? So you may be a first generation in the church. But why don't you let it start right now? I'm not satisfied with the revival of yesterday. Oh yeah, I can look back. I can see the cornerstone at the other building. 13th. In attendance at the first, when they first laid the foundation out on November 1969, Thanksgiving Day. Man, we can look back. But I'm telling you, I cannot live yesterday. The Bible says that the Lord gave them manna. And they had to gather what they needed that day and eat it that day. They could not, except on the Sabbath, they could gather for the Sabbath weekend. But they could not. They could not get more today than for, tomorrow, for enough for tomorrow. Or it would rot. You've got to have it fresh every day. You can't live today and celebrate yesterday. You celebrate it right now. You testify right now about what God is doing. And when you get in trouble, you can remember where God brought you from. But he brought you from it so he can still do it today. He can still do it now. He can still do it in your midst. I'm thankful for heritage. I'm thankful for my experiences. But God is a God of the here. And he's a God of now. Satan would have you live in yesterday. He would have you reminisce about the old days. And fixating on those who are gone to be with the Lord. Let me help you with something. Some of you grew up in the old days. I've been a part of every building of this church. When I was born, I was in the one across the street. I've been all the way through it. I've been here when we couldn't pay the light bill. I've been here when we couldn't pay the mortgage and somebody had to mortgage their home against the church. We are not there anymore. 
I'm telling you we're living in a bright day for this church. We are living in a great hour. We are living in a powerful time. Somebody says, I wish I could have been living when Peter was living. I wish I could have been in the church when Paul was in the church. Come on, somebody. You're living when Jesus is in the church. I'm glad I'm living when you're in this church. I'm glad you're living when I'm in this church. We are here now. Satan would have you think about what God could do. Oh, I remember my granddad and grandmother. Oh, I remember all their sacrifices. And if you're not careful, you'll get low to sleep in nostalgia. And you'll worship your history more than you worship the God of your history. Oh, I know what the Bible says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I also know the story that every time one of those young men would meet God face to face, he said, I knew that you could serve my, you could help my father, but can you help me too? Come on, like Jacob wrestled with the Lord at Penwell. He said, I've got to get this for myself. I've got to get along with God. It doesn't matter what you did for my father. It doesn't matter what you did for my mother. God, I've got to touch you myself. We've got to continue. You see, the reason it is so important not to live on the coattails of yesterday is because out of his own word, he said, I'm a God of the living. Is that what he said? I am a God of the living and not of the dead. Were you saying that God, he, he might, uh, so on and so forth, that died and went on to be with the Lord, he's not their God? Absolutely. Those that died in him are alive in him. But he's your God today. He is your God today. Quit thinking of in terms of the God that my father served, the God that my grandfather served. What about the God that you're called to serve? We've got to continue in the word because the greatest days are here and now. They are not there and then. Sister Rachel, come help me. I feel the, I feel the props on the plane starting to, the engine shuddering. See, it's hell's plan to get you sidetracked on what God will do now. Let me give you some, some little insight into what hell wants to do. Here's some lies. Here's some lies. He'll say, God will not punish or judge you for the sin that you're doing now. Amen? Does he say it? And then he'll even say, maybe he never will. And then he'll say, but what you do now doesn't matter. After all, listen church, it was Satan's original deception when he told Eve, you will not surely, what does that mean? Now, you'll not die. It's his original deception. And he'll, he'll use this one. What you knew about God then may not be true now. Hear me? Let's let that set in place. And he'll say, what God wants in your life isn't important right now. Maybe later. Maybe later, just not right now. Like you need to go to church, just maybe not today. You need to live for God, but maybe not, not right now while you're a teenager. Come on. You need to really get your heart right with God, but not, not when you're depressed. You, you need to let the emotions play out. Oh, come on. These are lies that he tells. Oh, then he finally gets you there. He'll start telling you, God doesn't love you anymore. He doesn't love you now. If that one doesn't work, he'll tell you this one. The people of God that have always been there for you. They don't love you now. They don't love you now. He'll say maybe God isn't the same now. As he used to be. 
I've come to remind you, though, that every word he says is a lie. The Bible says he was a liar, a deceiver, and he was a murderer from the beginning. Every word he speaks is a lie now. And every word he speaks is a way to thwart you from serving God now. Since the beginning, he has always been and he still is now a liar. He's a liar. But Hebrews 13 and 8, the word of the Lord says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, which means what? Now. Forever. If you'll stand with me this, this afternoon. I finished the introduction to my sermon. And I know it seems like I came to preach to you about the devil and what he's doing now, but that was not what I came to do. I did want to show you what the enemy is trying to do now against you. But I came really preaching to you about God. Paul said, I came not preaching anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It may have happened yesterday, but it's still relevant right now. Specifically, what Jesus Christ is wanting to do, the work He wants to do in your life right now. And I want to put God's plan and the enemy's plan in contrast so you're not confused and you're not deceived about who is doing what. I'm here to tell you that God is still doing now what He has always done. He still is who he always has been. And he still will be what he always has been. I have to emphasize now to you. Maybe you're in agreement with me today. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe you are now. But it's time is now. So let's get together. The time to buy into a vision of growth and revival is right now, church. Come on, this is where you can't amen. If you haven't said amen before, right now is the time. Now is the time. The time to buy into a vision for revival is now. God's will is allowing this church now to be a leading force in this community. The time for this church is now. It is now. Somebody say now. It's time that every person in this church realize what God wants it to be now. Not become, but be as possible as it is. Right now, I want to see it come alive. I want to see it real in my heart. I want to see it through eyes of faith now. Is there anybody here that now you see what God wants to do? You're beginning to taste the vision. Is there anybody here? Come on, shout amen. Lift your hands. You can feel it. You can see it. Let me tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take be at church, not been at church, not going to come, be at church. Be a part of the church. Somebody you can be a part of the church. If all you're used to doing is coming to church two or three times a week, I challenge you to double it. Hold on. Have we read the story about Elijah and Elisha, how Elisha got the double portion? How many of you are thankful for the blessings of God in your life? Raise your hand. What if you doubled your offering of yourself to God? What if you doubled your relationship? Come on, let's double. Now is the time to start. If you hadn't supported the church, now is the time to support the church. It's the time. Now is the time when you're not at church to be church. Because let me tell you something, we have to build four walls to put us somewhere when it's 100 degrees and when it's raining and when it's dark. But this is not the church, this is just the meeting place of the church. This is just the house where we come to show up as the church collectively. But it's time that when you walk out, you are the church. I'm a part of this church. The Bible says that I'm in the church. I've been born into the family. I've been born into the family of God. I am the church. I am the church. The time is now. I know Brother Ty in his quote, he talked about the new building. Let me tell you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen one way or the other. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what comes our way. It's going to happen. And if you're, not, if you're not on board, if you've not kind of figured out yet the need, let me give you something. This is what's happening now. 17 in the youth class. 
30 in kids church. Our food pantry has outgrown the room and the building. That's right now. Our recovery class has outgrown the youth room. You mean, let me tell you something. When I seen, here's kind of what God spoke to me about the recovery program. I'm just, I'm just meddling out. Oh, it's 11 after. I'm hurrying. I seen it on Facebook about a year ago. At Brother Sims Church in Foley, Alabama. Their church was probably running 200, maybe a little more. They had a recovery program, and I think their church is running about 700 now with those people coming to their church. Do they all look like the saints? Let me tell you something. The saint starts right here in the heart. It starts in the heart. Jesus gets on the inside. He'll handle everything else. He'll take care of everything else. All you've got to do is just let him get on the inside. He'll wash you, make you thoroughly whole and pure. I thought, come on, if that could happen in Foley, Alabama, why could it not happen right here? Why could it not happen here? Why could it not happen in Columbiana? Why could it? We talk about Shelby, Alabama, how bad the drugs are. Why could God not do a revival of a de addicts in Shelby? Why could he not run through Wilsonville? Why? Why? Church, we don't need to miss out on the momentum that God has given us. The time for unity is right now. What has being against everything and everybody ever, ever accomplished? Nothing. When has working separate from the will of God ever been fruitful? Never. Time is now. The time to see the church through the eyes of faith is now. Aunt Sandy... Aunt Marsha, Dad, I don't know if Sherry's here this morning. I don't see her. Let me tell you something. This is not the church that my granddad built. This is the church he dreamed of building. But let me tell you, this is not the church that I dream of. The one I'm dreaming of is greater still. I still believe God's got more in store for us. I still believe God has greater. I am not satisfied with what God has done. But I am looking. Abraham, the Bible said, was a sojourner in a land that was not his own. But he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. It's the one he dreamed of. But I'm ready to begin to dream dreams that are bigger than the, what my vision is. And I'm ready not to see it later, but now. I want to say, Lord, let your kingdom come now. And as I close, as I close, this came to me this morning. Have you ever heard a child storm around and say to mom and dad, give it to me now. I want it now. I want and what do we think of, brother, brat, that you little brat, you want it, everything right now. Please don't misunderstand what I'm telling you. I'm not looking to God and demanding God, give me, give me, give me now. What I'm doing is listening to God. And whatever he says, I'm saying, yes, sir, right now, right now, right now, now, now. It's all about who's saying it. It's not me saying now, it's God saying now and me saying yes, sir. I will do it. Right now, church, as these altars are open, if you're here today and you're ready for what God wants to do and you're willing to get on board and you're willing to put aside hurts and you're willing to put aside sacred cows and you're willing to put aside some things that are really in the grand scheme of eternity not that important, and just say to the Lord, yes, God, I hear you, and I'm ready right now. Would you come this morning as she sings? Oh, yeah.
yes, God. Come on, church, respond to this call. If you've not responded to a call before today, now, please, now, God is calling us to a higher plane. He's calling us to a greater dimension of faith than we've ever experienced. House of healing. Come on, lift those hands in faith. Come on, in faith, begin to receive what God wants to do in your life, in your family right now. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, would you move and respond to God? There has been conviction. There has been pleading and pulling. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, come alive. This is a house of miracles. Hallelujah. Sister, right now I believe God is working in your mind and your body. In the name of Jesus, He's working in your family right now. I believe God is working. He's working, Lord, in our dreams and our hopes and our ambitions right now. He's working in our callings and our ministry. He's working in our families right now. He's healing our minds right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I pray that you strengthen his heart now. Lord, I pray that you strengthen his spirit right now. Right now, God. Lord, strengthen my brother. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthen him. Lord, I pray, God, that you put an anointing upon him. Lord, I pray, God, that you allow him to walk in heavenly places now. Lord, God, work in his life now. It doesn't matter about yesterday, only right now, God. Lord, we surrender to you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Touch these young men right now. Touch these young men, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Name of Jesus, come alive. Hallelujah, everything. You see, you don't understand, this was not just another pretty sermon. This was not just a sermonette. This was a call. This was a call. This was a call. If you're wrestling with the call, I'm asking you just one time, just one time, do like Samuel did and say, yes, Lord, your servant's hearing you. Come on, this is not a time just to hear a good song and say nice words to the Lord. This is a time to build an altar. This is a time to make a commitment. Make a commitment. Come on, somebody. Come on, sister. This is a house of miracles. It's happening now. Somebody lift your voice right now. Somebody make a commitment to God right now. Right now. Come on, somebody now. Right now, somebody make a commitment to the Lord. Come on, if you need to repent, do it now. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood, God, over every heart that is shackled, every, over every heart that is in bondage. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we release God the blood. Lord, let it flow freely in their lives, God, now. Lord, let there be no hindrances. Lord, let there be no strongholds that the enemy would block them, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that people whose eyes are scaled over by world, Lord, that they would fall off if they would call on you. Oh, come on, brothers, in this church. It's now the time for you to lead in prayer. Brothers, it's time for you to lead your family in worship right now. Now is the time. Today is the day. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on and cry out to Him. Men, begin to cry out to God now. 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 The house of miracles.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and worship the Lord. You know, I feel this. I want the Silver Sisters. If I could get the Silver Sisters to come right here as she begins to play, keep playing. All my Silver Sisters right here. You Silver Sisters are, are a force in this church. All you sisters in this church, you may not think that you're mighty, but you are women of Zion. You're powerful women of God. And I'm asking right now that you could put your hearts greater to the kingdom than you ever have before. Come on, if you're a silver sister, get up here. I want you to build a foundation in this altar today. Come on, young people. You can follow suit. It's called building unity. Look at those young people. Let's get some more young people. Begin to build an altar. Come on, brothers. Yoke up with brothers. Come on, find somebody. Build an altar. Build an altar. Build an altar. Come on, sisters. Come on, brothers, build an altar right now. Make a commitment right now. This is a house, a house of miracles. Mm. Hallelujah. Before we dismiss, can we just lift those hands across this church? Come on right now. Hallelujah. Come on, let the presence of God now just rush over you. Let the love of God embrace you now. Let the fellowship of His suffering right now encourage you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. On May the 19th, the devil tried to kill me over in the, doing, helping with the groceries for the country. But the devil's a liar. The doctor's amazed how good I'm doing. He told me that day that before he done the surgery, he said, your, left, your right leg will be anywhere from a foot to an inch longer than that. I got news for you. God did a miracle this morning. I felt my leg, my right leg, longer than my left. Now they feel the same. God done a miracle, and I got news for that devil. He can come next week and tell me that leg is longer, but he's a liar because God has healed my leg this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Please don't go out of here and say, I wish God would do the miracles he used to do. He's doing them right now. Oh, don't say, I wish God would touch people with the Holy Ghost like he used to. Because he's doing it now. He's already doing it now. He'll refill you now. He'll build your life up right now. Come on, is there praying for this young man, Brother Chris Brown? Lift your hands. Pray with him right now. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody begin to plead with the Lord right now as he wrestles. As he wrestles everything the enemy's trying to do. Let's pray and believe that God would have his way now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a house of miracles. Church, before we leave here today, and I know some people have already had to leave. 
I want you to shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck, tell them you're glad to see them. If you see somebody new, tell them you're glad to see them. It's good to see the Ray family back here this morning. God bless them. Good to see them. Amen. You look around, there's still a few out for different reasons. Reach out to them, love them. God bless you all in Jesus' name.